Mondays with Monsignor Pope here on Morning Joy, where truth matters. Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm Keith Downey, your host. And what did Pope Francis exactly say about all religions? They arrive to God. We'll be talking all about it now that somewhat uh, the dust has settled here with Monsignor Charles Pope. Good morning, Monsignor. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> yeah, the dust may have settled, but there's still a lot of fog. <laughs> yeah, that is certainly true. Uh, I guess to help set the stage here for those that might not be aware, maybe they've uh, tuned out the news cycles, which I congratulate those who have been able to do that. Um, so essentially during an interreligious meeting at Catholic Junior College in Singapore, Pope Francis said that religions are like different languages in order to arrive at God, but God is God for all. And if God is God for all, then we are all sons and daughters of God. So that's what he said. Um, any, any initial thoughts on that, Monsignor? Well, I mean, <laughs> it's an odd analogy. Um, I, I don't, I don't actually follow. It's not a very good analogy. I, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it means, but I think more troublesome are some, you know, other, other aspects of what he said, you know? Sure. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting because it really kind of sparked a debate. I mean, obviously online, um, could you maybe share your perspective on, you know, what he said in general and, and how it lines with our traditional Catholic teaching? Well, when he, when he said that all, all religions are a path to God. Mm -hmm. that's the problem that's the problem quote i mean yeah. it, it it's not it's almost a direct refutation of what jesus said mm. i mean almost word for word i mean jesus says uh, i am the i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me and then for 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 a pope to be you know re recorded as saying um you know there are many paths to, to you know to god is is just the opposite. I mean, so let's see. I've got Jesus saying A and Pope saying not A. And as a Catholic, I'm supposed to say, well, they're supposed to be saying the same thing. So I gotta go with Jesus on this one. <laughs> but it shouldn't it shouldn't be that way. I mean, the Pope mm -hmm. is supposed to be affirming what we believe, not engaging in some, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's not my job to, to declare things heresy, but I mean, sure. in, in the broad sense of something, I mean, it is a heresy if, it, if, it's, if it's the opposite of what Jesus says. Now, it's not my job. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he is a heretic. We all make mis right. we all misspeak. But, you know, you want to wait, you're going to wait for a long time for there to be any clarification. And then a couple of days later, he seems to have doubled down on it. And so I think we're left mm -hmm. with a well, I'm always in these awkward positions when these things come up because, you know, I'm a man under authority. I have to, right. you know, yeah, but I got to say, I mean, here's the teaching. Whatever the Pope has said or didn't say, reported to say, didn't say, here's what we teach. You know, we teach what mm -hmm. Jesus said, which is there's only one way to God, and that's with Jesus Christ. Now, of course, that does raise a lot of questions that Catholics might ask, you know, well, is that what we're saying that everybody who's not a card carrying member of the Catholic Church goes straight to hell and and so on. And so, again, there are nuances to the position. But at the end of the day, a word for word, you know, refutation of Jesus not really being well, he's one way. Well, gosh, gosh, darn it, those poor martyrs in the third century, you know, the first three centuries, you know. Gosh, too bad they didn't get that memo because they died for nothing. A little pinch on the on the of incense might have been okay because after all, that's just another way to God. And so you see what I'm saying? We, we, it's yeah. just astonishingly problematic for to be talking at best, at best, in such a loosey goosey manner. And yet, yeah. uh, this is uh, very common, unfortunately. We're we're left kind of like, oh my gosh, damage control. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if you, Keith, if you want to go through, there are, I, I think, yeah. questions that Catholics often raise. Right. About, um, you know, this issue. I mean, what would. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, it's just, it's interesting because I know that there's a lot of, uh, you know, friends of family that like will take this and run with it. And then we're like, well, this is what we actually believe. And then it's just kind of this uh, friction, I guess you would call it, where like, no, this is what we believe. And like, well, mm -hmm. the Pope said this. Like how do we how do we go yeah. go through those conversations? Right. Well, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, when it, when it comes to the, the Pope said this or that, let, let's set that aside because um, we have a clear teaching that's given to us mm -hmm. by the Church in writing 
that was carefully thought out. It wasn't said at some public setting, you know. Okay, so in other words, we have to go to our our sources. For the Pope to, uh, well, this is not a t- teaching the Pope can change, first of all. Secondly, because Jesus said it, it's right out of the mouth of Jesus. Secondly, um, there is, um, uh, you know, for, for all of us, you know, the, 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 it is rare, 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 rare that the Pope uh, proposes some new dogma and does so under some, you know, the uh, under infallibility. Uh, it's happened once in my life and maybe twice in the life of older people. Uh, when the Pope, for example, in 52 declared the assu- the assumption of Mary. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, but likewise, uh, when Pope John Paul declared that women cannot be ordained priests, uh, that would be another example. And, 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 but otherwise, when popes speak, it doesn't necessarily mean, well, what they say is unassailable. So that's the first answer. Look, you can't, we, the Pope is not an oracle. Uh, that, for that reason, I think popes, and I don't mean just Pope Francis, but we've had this problem really since the dawn of the modern television age, but popes, I think, talk too much, and uh, they should probably say less. Um, and, of course, I'm a big talker, you know, but, <laughs> but I'm not a pope. You know, people could say, well, you're right. just a dumb priest. You know, when you're the pope, you sort of have a sacred trust with people because the church teaches that we should give uh, our assent even to non-infallible teachings of the, of the pope, and that puts us in very... That's a very sacred trust, which means the Pope should speak extremely carefully, very seldom, and very, as I say, very carefully. So this has been a problem in the modern age that we haven't really worked out. All these off the off to the side remarks of popes and so on. All right, but to the teaching itself, if I could, mm-hmm. Illumin Gentium sixteen, I think, is the go-to text for a modern statement of the problem. Lumen Gentium is, is, is 16 is, 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 is a great, great summary, but it, it unfortunately, most people never quote to the end. They quote the mm-hmm. first part. I'm going to, it's a long paragraph and, you know, reading something is just deadly. So I want to just quickly summarize, but Lumen Gentium 16, which is summarized also in the catechism, but let's go right to the source. And it says that there, there are there are people that are somehow related to the Church of Christ, you know, Christ's one true church, namely the Catholic Church, um, in various ways. And it mentions certainly first and foremost the Jewish people. Then it mentions the Muslims, um, and um, and 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 so on. Uh, there, there's, there's also mentions of uh, um, you know some other some other religious groups and traditions. But it says here, and this is the kind of the key text. It says. Um, <clears throat> It is, um, it is the, the Savior wills that all people be saved, and therefore those can attain salvation who, through no fault of their own, so first of all, underline that, mm-hmm. through no fault of their own, do not know the gospel of Christ, or, is this, uh, or they do not know of his church. But they are sincerely seeking God, and they're moved by grace to uh, to, to do, you know, to do, you know, to, to strive for salvation and so on. All right. Mm-hmm. Even though they haven't ex- arrived at an explicit knowledge. And it says here, and now here comes a very important part of the text. He says, and therefore whatever good or truth is found among them is looked upon the church as a preparation for the gospel. Hmm. <clears throat> now, but here comes the, um, you know, here comes the, 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 the final two lines that everybody omits. It says, but often, but it says, but very often, did you hear that? Very often, mm. deceived by, by the evil one, most people have become vain in their reasonings and have exchanged the truth of God for a lie and served the creature rather than the creator. Uh, or there are some who are living and dying in this world without God and are exposed to final despair. Therefore, to promote the glory of God and to procure salvation of all these, and mindful of the commandment of the Lord, preach the gospel to every creature, the church fosters missions with care and attention. Well, we used to. <laughs> but you see, there's a sort of blase, well, everybody is, you know, not trying to get there. And, you know, we sort of watered all down. And we don't hear that last quote, which is a paraphrase of Romans 1. And it's warning. It's saying, unfortunately, this is no. This is not a blank check. It's just the opposite. People are are in darkness, and their minds and their intellects prefer the darkness. We got to break through and preach Christ, not just to them, to us. It's it's absolutely essential. And so this sort of well, kind of we're all kind of nice people looking for God. It, it, it's there. I don't doubt that there's an aspect, but the same council also said, but you know. 
let's be honest, mm -hmm. human beings tend toward the darkness and they're inspired by the devil and they're lost and they're confused and we got to get in there and uh you know yeah. we gotta we gotta it's like a medical doctor you know everybody wants to be healthy but most people don't want to do the work to be healthy <laughs> it's true <laughs> so knowing all of that and and it being an lumen gentium that's obviously very speculative here but why might the pope say something like this knowing all the, these teachings well <laughs> Well, you're asking me, I guess, to sort of uh, speculate because right. uh, most That's of what weird. I'm saying is totally speculative. I mean, part of it right. is I think you've been enamored by the age. I think yeah. there is this attitude today. Oh, everybody means well and all is well. And, you know, and you know, it doesn't matter what a person thinks or believes. It's just whether they don't beat right. their wife and they pay their taxes. So in other words, it's all about just kind of good behavior and being nice. And look, do you see how that trivializes the human person, Keith? I mean, we were made yeah. to know the truth. Oh, yeah. This is the truth that sets us free. It's not just, well, we behave ourselves. We're just kind of nice people, basically. We, you know, well, I hope so, but we're called to be holy. Mm. And, and, you know, so I think that's the spirit of the age. And I, I'm, yeah. I, I'm afraid that that's what it sounds like, what he's talking. And I think that I do think he's trying to maybe reach out. Yeah. I, I, would, I don't think he's trying to twist the truth. I think, though, right. I think, oh, okay, I think he's trying to reach out and, Right. Maybe set a, a, a state, a, a, you know, kind of a, a sense of their dignity and so on. But it, it's kind of backfires, I think. Yeah. What I've learned from this whole experience, and I was talking to my wife about this, is that it really made me look into the catechism, like just do a deep search on what we actually believe. And, and you know, yeah. there's, it's great for people out there that are listening to you, Monsignor, because you are sharing the truth, right? Like this is this is the truth. Um, yeah. and this is something that we can't... Uh, not talk about so before we uh, go could you give us a quick blessing monsignor yeah i don't mean to sound so grouchy but <laughs> no no not at all it's just one of those things that, oh gosh all right <laughs> all right uh, may almighty god bless you all the father the son and the holy spirit and you have a good morning <laughs> thank you so much monsignor so much for giving us the truth we can catch yes, you Lord. on the quest a pilgrimage of faith weekdays at 4 p.m on tuesdays and fridays Highly recommend checking out last Friday's News Roundup, where we dive deeper into the same exact subject, voter polls, and the future of Notre Dame. And that is it for the end of our first hour. Thank you so much, Monsignor. And, but hey, you know, there's two ways. Like, if you're going to be listening to the Holy Mass coming up next, please pray for us. Otherwise, stay tuned. We're having another second hour of truth and joy coming up just for you, right here on Morning Joy, where truth matters. This has been Morning Joy, where truth matters, hosted by Keith Downey. Take some joy with you today. Visit grnonline.com slash joy to listen again, share a segment, or answer the question of the day. That's grnonline.com slash joy.